Our next lesson is called Advanced Strategies for Factoring Quadratic Expressions, Day 1. Let's start with the opening exercise. It says, consider the following examples of multiplication. So there's example 1 and example 2. You have to answer the question, how are the products different in each example? How are they similar? So at this time, please pause the video and try the opening exercise. When you're ready to go over the answers, you can resume the video. Okay, now that you've tried the opening exercise, let's go over the answers. First, I wanted to write the general format for a quadratic re expression. So you're going to see over here in the corner, ax squared plus bx plus c. So remember that a, b, and c are numbers. a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is your constant number at the end. So when looking at these, example 2 has an a value of 2, where example 1 has an a value of 1. Second thing, both examples, however, have in common a C value of 15. So this means we have to take a different approach for problems like example 2 because of the fact that the coefficient on x squared, or the A value, is not a 1. So we're going to learn two methods in order to be able to factor these types of trinomials. Today is going to be the trial and error method. So when looking at example one, they would like us to factor the following trinomial, 2x squared plus x minus 6. Now we're still going to start with the same way that we did before. We're going to take the c value, which is negative 6, and we are going to list the factors of negative 6 in pairs so we can try to pick the pair that would go together. So I would have negative 1 and 6, 1 and negative 6, 2 and negative 3, and then negative 2 and 3. Now the second step is now a new step. Because the a value is not a 1, we actually have to list the factor pairs of the a value as well. So we have 2. We're going to have 1 and 2, concentrating on the positive factors. Since we see a positive 2 up front, and typically the leading ones are not negatives. If you wanted to list negative 1 and negative 2, you could, but you will not be ending up using them in this example. Okay. So the key here is that you literally have to try and plug things in, check them, and see if they work. So a couple things in the diagram I want to label. Whatever goes in front of your x's, this has to be the factors of 2. So I can tell you either 2 is going to go here and 1 is going to go here, or 1 is going to go here and 2 is going to go here. We're going to have to figure out which placement makes the most sense. Then in this position and in this position, we are going to have the factors of negative 6. So again, we have to try all these different pairs and different combinations of them. So to give you an example of what I mean by tri trial and error method, so let's say I put a 2 here and a 1 here. I also have to try factor pairs of negative 6. So let's try a 2, negative 2, and 3. This is where your multiplying of polynomials is going to work for you. Because if we start to do our multiplications, 2x times x would be 2x squared. That would work. 2x times 3 would be 6x. But then negative 2 times x would be negative 2x. And the 6x and the negative 2x would make a positive 4. And if I look here in my middle term, I don't have a positive 4. So that combination is not going to work. So I'll erase the 3 and the negative 2. And maybe I will try negative 2 and positive 3 instead. So I'll do negative 2 and positive 3. So now we see we'd have 2x squared, because 2x times x is 2x squared. We'd have 2x times 3, which is 6x. And then we would have negative 2 times x would be negative 2x. We still end up with that 4x in the middle, which does not match ours. So now you can try something like switching their spots. So maybe I want to do 2x with the negative 3 here and then the x with the positive 2 here. So then again, we would try to multiply them out. 2x times x would be 2x squared. That matches. 
2x times 2 would be 4x. Negative 3 times 1 would be negative 3x. That combination would give me a positive 1. And then negative 3 times 2 is indeed negative 6. So I can show that by using our boxes for multiplication, like we've done in the past. I can take 2x minus 3 here and x plus 2 here, and I can check to see if it really matches up. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 2 would be 4x. Negative 3 times x would be negative 3x, and negative 3 times 2 would be negative 6. When we combine our like terms, I would indeed get 2x squared plus x minus 6. So that means my final answer here is 2x minus 3 times x plus 2. So I hope you can see with that example what I mean by trial and error. Let's look at another example in example two. We're gonna try factoring a quadratic expression with some negative coefficients. So this time we've put some negatives in. So we're still gonna follow the same process. My C value is a negative four. So I'm gonna list factor pairs of negative four. So one and negative four, negative one and four, and then we have two and negative two. But because my coefficient or my A value is not a one, I also need to list my factor pairs of three. Okay, so I could have 1 and 3, negative 1 and negative 3. Again, these are kind of the optional ones. I have not seen any need to use those, but if I'm technically listing the factor pairs, I should include them. But you should always be trying to use the positive ones. 95% of the time, those are the ones that you're going to use. So now again, I'm trying to place them in the proper spots. Remember that these two have to be the factors of 3. Whereas in these two have to be the factors of negative four. So I'm gonna trial and error my way through again. The nice thing when it's a three or a two, it's a prime number, we know it's either gonna be three and one and one and three. So I'm gonna try to put three here and one here. And now we have to test out some of our other numbers. So let's say we try two and negative two. Well, 3x times x would be 3x squared. 3x times negative 2 would be negative 6x. 2 times x would be positive 2x. I would end up with a negative 4. So you can see that's not going to work. If I were to switch them, I could do negative 2 here and positive 2 here. I'd get 3x squared. 3x times 2 would be positive 6x. Negative 2 times x would be negative 2x, and when I combine them, I'd get a 4x. So I can see with my 2s, I'm not getting the combination that I need. So now I'll try a different pair. Let's try the 1 and negative 4. So I'll put 1 here and negative 4 here. 3x times x would be 3x squared. That's good. 3x times negative 4 would be negative 12x, and then 1 times x would be 1x. That's going to give me negative 11. That's not any good. So I'm going to try to switch them. I'm going to put negative 4 here and 1 here. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x. Negative 4 times x would be negative 4x, and if I combine those, I do get the negative 1 that I want in the middle. So we can check this out by doing our boxes, making sure we have the right combination. We've got 3x minus 4 and x plus 1. So I would get 3x squared plus 3x minus 4x and minus 4. So if I were to combine my like terms, I'd have 3x squared minus x minus 4, which does check. So now I know my final answer is 3x minus 4 times x plus 1. So that's how the trial and error process works when you're factoring trinomials when a is not equal to one. And let's go back up next to trial and error and put a is not equal to one so that you remember that that's the process for these types. Now at this time, if your teacher has given you a separate practice activity, you can stop the video and go complete that practice. If they would like you to complete the practice within the notes, then please pause the video, try practice exercises one through six, and then resume the video when you're ready to go over your answers. Okay, now that you've had time to practice the problems, here are the answers. If at any point you need to pause the video to copy or fix your notes, please do so. In number one, and in all of them, you're always going to list the factor pairs of the A value and the factor pairs of the C value. So in number one, you should get 3x plus 4 times x minus 2. Now, I did not show the multiplying step 
to check it. You don't have to either. You can show it if you want to, but you can also just kind of do it in your head like you saw me demonstrate when we were doing the, pra the actual example problems. Okay, so 3x plus 4 times x minus 2. For number two, you should have 3x minus 2 times x plus 4. So a couple notes I'd like you to add. First of all, the note that you see comparing 1 and 2, note there's similar answer but different products. So be very careful here. There was a slight change. By switching the signs, you can see how the outcome changes. Okay? Also, the placement of the negative 2 and the 4 are going to be important. You saw that before. Sometimes you might have the right pair, but you have to switch their spots. Because the placement is now going to be affected by whether it gets multiplied by a 3 or a 1, because we have a coefficient in front of the x squared that's not a 1. When it's a 1, we don't have to worry about that extra factor. Going on to the next page, number three said to notice there's a one as a coefficient in the middle. So just a reminder when you do not see anything there that it's actually a positive one. So your answer there should be 3x plus 7 times x minus 2. You'll still see me on this page listing my factors. Again, you can check it if you need to since this is trial and error. Number four was definitely a challenge. That's why I wrote if it's starting to take you too long, you can skip to the next one. This one should be 2x plus 3 and x minus 12. In number five, there's a couple ways you can do this. If you jump right into what we learned today, you would have 2x plus 3 times negative 1x plus 3. But there is another option. We have learned about GCF. So you could factor out a GCF of negative 1 first, which would give you 2x squared minus 3x minus 9, and then factor that trinomial into 2x plus 3 times x minus 3. So either of those answers would be correct. Then in number six, r squared plus six fourths r plus nine sixteenths involves fractions. So we do need to be able to be prepared with fractional trinomials as well. Here you should get r plus three fourths times r plus three fourths. So it did follow one of the patterns we learned about, which kind of helped out and made it a little bit easier. Um, three fourths plus three fourths is the six fourths. And then when you square it, you get nine sixteenths. So that concludes your lesson on advanced strategies for factoring quadratic expressions, day one.